sponsoring the NATO a whopping three point five million dollars. Am I going to get a, a flare off of this thing? You bet. It's suitable Andy, for framing and will make a great addition to any racing collection. So here's the place right now. Oh, it's just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. After battling with Benny Parsons for sixth and seventh position, Harry broke away, left Benny in his wake, and now Gant is just about to uh, tack in on the rear end of that second draft of position three on... Staff Chameleon Change Award bonus. He improved his position. Car victories. He's tied for third with Bobby Allison on the all-time list. That's not surprising, Barney, the way that Petty qualified. As Ned Jarrett told us, the top of the broadcast, Petty qualified in the first three rows, and when he... Petty... I'm doing so. Then, uh, then I'll probably still be doing it. But, uh, you know, how long it is, uh, the number of races I win and stuff like that has nothing to do with it. And has a keen interest in sports. So on behalf of the people on Motor Racing Network, the Daytona International Speedway, President Reagan, we welcome you. Well, Ned, I'm pleased to be here. This is a, a real kick for me. At the same time, however, having been a sports announcer myself, I'm kind of glad that I um, <clears throat> that I didn't uh, have to broadcast this because I'm having so much trouble trying to sort out who's on first. Well, about the time the Air Force One was landing just behind the speedway here, we had a seven-car draft for the lead that just made pit stops, what should be their last pit stops. That uh, sometimes tends to break them up a little bit, but Richard Petty, who is trying to win his 200th NASCAR Winston Cup victory here today, which would set an all-time record, is out front now in car number 43, and I believe you have some uh, special ties to the owner of that car. Yes, uh, and he's, he's sitting right up here, Mike Kerb, who is out there and... Uh, uh, shouldn't mention this on a holiday like this, a partisanship, but uh, we were kind of tied up in politics uh, in California. The, I, won't mention the, I won't mention which party. Okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> let, let that go by the wayside. I'm sure that you're amazed by the speeds that you're seeing these cars run here today and the control the drivers have over them. Yes, I am, and uh, I've noticed one thing already. I've been here only a short time, but I've noticed that if you're trying to look at the number on the car, you better look when they're down the track a ways. You're not going to see it when they go by here. They're running about 200 miles an hour when they go by the, our position right here. Uh, this is one of the fastest points on the racetrack. You know, there was a moment out there when the Air Force One was coming in when I thought that we were over the track, and uh, it just was one of the expressways in normal holiday traffic. Well, I... <laughs> Sometimes it, it looks that way. And I think that we should emphasize, even though these cars are going upwards of 200 miles an hour, they are specially built race cars. They're running, of course, on a specially built racetrack. And we, the folks who are listening in by radio in their cars, we wouldn't want them out there trying this on the highway. <laughs> no, I, I hope not. Just, well, no, excuse me. Well, I was just going to say, out there, let them stay bumper to bumper. Well, they do run very closely. Of course, uh, drafting, you perhaps have heard that term, and that is uh, very normal and wins many races here on this racetrack. One car running, bursting the wind open, the other car can run faster than he could normally run by himself by running directly behind the other car. That's why we see them running so close together. Another thing that we have been pleased with, President Reagan, in this 
sport. And back when I was driving a race car, uh, it made me feel good to know that I was providing the American public with something besides what I felt was top-notch entertainment because it serves as a good proving ground for the automotive and aftermarket manufacturers to prove their products out here, which makes better and safer cars for a highway driving pleasure. Well, I, I know that that's always been one of the factors behind these great classic races is what we learn about uh, further improvements in automobiles, but you've just proven something else about the sport here. This is the first time you've mentioned that about uh, racing yourself, but here you are, hale and hearty and healthy. Uh, <laughs> well, thank God for that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, NASCAR has done a good job over the years, and the rules that go into the building of these race cars, they sometimes it gets in some pretty serious crashes, but because of the rules and the safety equipment that's built into the cars, the drivers most of the time are able to walk away, and thank God for that. Now, I just noticed one car that came into the pits, and I know that everyone was supposed to have had their regular pit stop. He looks as though he's got some problem. There isn't any rushing around as there normally is. That is true, and that is Kyle Petty. He's the son of Richard Petty, who is currently leading the race. Of course, Kyle has been racing on this circuit for about four years, and you are right. It, something is wrong with the, the car because it's a lot longer than normal pit stop. Now they're pushing him down pit road, so maybe he'll get back out in the running, but certainly it's cost him any chance he might have of winning this race. Yeah. But now you have a son in the car out here, don't you? Yes, I do. He's running his first super speedway event in uh, NASCAR Winston Cup competition. And as we talked, Mr. President, it looks like Kyle Petty's car is being pushed off pit road and behind the wall, so that will be all for him today. Oh, wow. Well. And it's a shame to run this near the end of the race with uh, about 25 laps to go. And he was running very well in the event here today, so he'll go back and see if he can see his dad win his 200th race here today. <laughs> Would you, let's pick up the winner. You are an old sportscaster, and uh, let's see if we can. Richard Petty, of course, driving the car number 43. He has, here he comes now, off a of turn four, the blue and red car. Why don't you pick him up and call him down through the front straight away? Oh, wait a minute here. Well, somebody <laughs> just went past spot. somebody right out here in front of us. I don't think that's informed anyone who's listening on radio very much about the, the race, but I thought they changed positions just as they went by. They certainly did, and Cale Yarborough, who is running the car number 28, is gaining on Richard Petty right now, who is running out front. And you notice how high Petty runs through the wall, or through the turn up next to the wall in turns one and two, but that's his style of driving. You do see a lot of passing in this area right directly in front of us. Yes, I hadn't noticed that before. Just when they get past the, the finish line here, and many of them make their move going into that upper turn. Well, this is one of the fastest points on the racetrack, and the drafting takes such an effect right in this area of the racetrack, and that's one reason that they're able to make the moves and, and move around the cars in front. If one car is uh, sticking to the pavement a little bit better than another one, that helps him in this area where the trial is. As we see going into turn one, Cale Yarborough continues to gain on Richard Petty, so it looks like we'll have a shootout down near the end of this race between those two drivers. They pulled away from the balance of the field. Currently running in third place is Terry Labotti. Harry Gant is in fourth place, and Bobby Allison in fifth place. And a fellow who has put on more good races with Richard Petty, David Pearson, is pulling into the pits now. The hood goes up on that car. Uh oh And there's trouble on the racetrack, Mr. President. We need to give it to our turn announcer. Ken Reagan that scraped the wall. He spells his name R-A-G-A-M, but he does have a sign on the back of that car, Reagan's for Reagan. <laughs> so I know that you appreciate that. I didn't know I had a relative out here. Uh, of course, uh, I found out of the clan when I was in Ireland, and the clan Reagan uh, over there, uh, every family just sort of picked out the way they'd spell the name. Um, <laughs> Well, yours has certainly become a popular one. If you look directly across from us, Bobby Allison's pits, the car number uh, 22, where he's pitting there, and he has a special sign for you there on the, on the wall. It's on the pit wall. As you see the yellow stripe that goes across there, it says, We Love Ron. Well, I appreciate that very much. Well, I know that a lot of these fellas are so pleased to have you here today and taking part in this big Independence Day celebration. I'm just marveling at you and your ability as they come off that upper turn way over there to pick out uh, who they are and what position and all. Well, see, I, I have that's, that's having lived down among them. That's right. I have an advantage on you. I've been around this business for about 30 years, and uh, 
know the fellas and know the colors, and really, when they get on the backstretch, the color is about the only way that you can pick out the car. We'll watch Richard Petty now as he comes off of turn four, and you can see Cale Yarbrough in the orange car is gradually picking up on him. They have some cars that they're coming up to put a lap on. Of course, they're running faster than those cars. That will help both of them as they pick up the draft of each of those cars that's come in front of us. Now, in other words, Petty is in, in number one now. Petty's in first place in the car number 43 and Yarborough in car number 28. Now they are, are two of the biggest winners here. Yarborough has won 14 events on this speedway. Petty has won 10. He's won two of these firecracker races. He's won seven of the Daytona 500 events. And it'll be interesting to see as they come up on those two cars that they're lapping down the back stretch. Petty is able to move right up on the outside of them very carefully and get ahead of Yarborough going into that turn. You know, if I were faced with the responsibility of broadcasting this, Ned, and with Petty out in front, I would just keep watching Mike Curb down here to find out whether he was in front yet. His reaction <laughs> tells the story. Behind. Yes. It certainly does. Well, he's, uh, everyone here, I think Petty has such a tremendous following, and they've been waiting for him to win to 200. Uh, the closest driver to him is David Pearson, who was in the pits there a moment ago. Pearson has 105 victories, but Petty has had such an illustrious career and has been so good for the sport, but he has his hands full now as Yarborough continues to what we call in the sport really men because he's gaining on him. They're, they're reversed right now as to their first, previous position when we first saw them out here in that one-two spot, yes, but holding at about the same distance, but with the one who was second now first. Yes, Yarborough made a little longer pit stop than Petty, and that gave him an advantage. But his car seems to be running a little bit faster right now, and he's close enough now that he can pick up the draft. And we'll keep it here for just a moment, and we'll let you call that pass if he indeed does pass it. The next time around, he should be right on his bumper as they go into turn one. He moves right in on the back bumper of Richard Petty. He's definitely in the draft as they go into that turn, so we'll see if Yarborough can make the move. See how high they go off the turn, yes. and Yarborough will be trying to get a good running start down the back stretch. He might be a little too far behind this time to make the pass. He but has crept up, though. He's only about half the distance he was uh, on that last lap. He's moved right in on his back yes. bumper now. Yes. Now, that's not the place to pass if he comes off of that fourth turn. It'll I don't be think down here to my right. either be down here or going down the back stretch. Here he is at the start finish line. It looks Yarbrough. like it's going to be. No. Petty was still out front, but Yarbrough yeah. couldn't make the pass there. Let's see as he comes off a of turn two, what he can do with him there. He dips down to the low side. Petty will go high in the turn. Now Yarbrough drifts up right behind him, but he is definitely in the full force of the draft now. With Petty opening up quite a space of wind in front of him, that lets Yarborough's car run a little bit freer, but he still can't make the pass as they go into turn three. So we're going to throw it back upstairs again, Mr. President. It's been a real pleasure having well, you here with us today for this Pepsi Firecracker 400. Well, it's a wonderful 4th of July for me, and I wish everybody a very happy 4th. We know that you look forward to greeting the winner. All right. by with his crew chief on pit road is Jerry Punch. Well, we're in the middle of a celebration, Barty. You would not believe the STP crew down here. Buddy, congratulations on a super. Buddy Parrott, I'm talking to the crew chief, Richard Petty. Buddy, congratulations on a super win today. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just want to say one thing. We couldn't have done this. We couldn't have won 200 races without the help from STP, and the STP products were used in the car today, and we're just super happy. Mike Kerb, maybe uh, the president will run you for vice president. <laughs> <laughs> well, the celebration, as you can hear in the background, Ralph Salvino, the folks from STP are here. They give the high five as the STP crew goes in the air and smacks those fists together. They will be headed to Victory Lane. Well, we'll be checking in with Bill Bowser and some of the Petty crew in Victory Lane. Richard Petty, he'll be on his way up to meet the president, receive those accolades. Anybody else, some more people know me. I think that's what the deal is. Well, <laughs> you know. By coincidence, Richard is chairman of the Reagan-Bush 
racing committee as well, which is an exciting thing, I think, also to point out. Well, I think it is, too. That's Mike Kerb making that statement. Richard, let me ask you one racing question. President Reagan asked you about that pass on the last lap. Of course, you knew that Kale was going to make that pass going into turn three. Then uh, you had to plan accordingly. Well, see, we ran into the same thing, experience, okay? I, I ran into the same thing in 1976. David Pearson done me the same thing. And I got back by him when he went in and went in too hard and went high, and I got back by him. The only thing was David and myself crashed, and David wound up winning the race. But this time I was a little more cautious of what's going on, even though we hit each other two or three times. The deal was I never got by him as far as what I got by David. So the deal was I knew that if he went in there wide open, his car wasn't going to work. It, for me to be in exactly the right place to be able to make the turn, without having to let off the gas. And uh, I was able to do that. Then the slow car helped me too. Uh, because what happened, it, was give, it didn't give uh, him any room to manipulate. All he had was the wall. And uh, you know, so from that standpoint, we just got lucky. Getting that 200 under these circumstances has to be one of the greatest things that's happened to you. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's just super, uh, you know, with the president being here, it's gonna be, you know, way that much better PR for me. But you gotta figure now, I'm out campaigning for him too. So maybe I can help him at being I'm running 200 then it might, might help his career a little bit, too. Yep, uh, I'll be looking over my shoulder for you along about November. <laughs> I'm going to be helping you. You can bet on that. Could I get a question in here? Did I understand you to say that you bumped each other a few times? Well, a couple of times. These are a little different color sheet metal on my blue and, and red car than what started the race. And there's a little bit of blue and red on his orange and white car. <laughs> can you imagine that at 200 miles an hour? No, I can't imagine that. I, uh, the, the, deal, the deal is, it's, uh, we were dead side by side when we did this, and it's not as bad as when you, you know, you're behind somebody or you come up and clip them. But side by side, uh, even though you're running 200 mile an hour, the, the only impact is the difference between the speed of the car. If it was two mile an hour difference in the speed of the car, it'd be two mile an hour bunt, but we hit each other pretty hard. <laughs> I'm, I just got no answer to that. <laughs> the sponsor of the car, STP, Ralph Selby. Glad to know you, Mr. Mr. President, President. It's a pleasure, believe me. Well, my pleasure. You all must be very pleased and, and proud well, and with every right to be. been 25 years trying to win 200 races, so you can bet we're all pleased. We're pleased oh, you're golly. here, and we're pleased we won the race because you're here. So uh, we, we hope it helps you and us also. Thank you. Wow. Okay, of course, that's the goings on here Richard in the President's Cutting. Suite. He began his stock car career July 12, 1958. He finished sixth in a 100 mile NASCAR convertible race at Columbia, South Carolina. His first victory came in that division July 18, 1950. I can tell you myself that it can be confusing, and it was a bit of a confusing finish. I wonder, Richard, when you noticed that Hebron had left the track, the caution flag was going to come out, and you had an effect a one lap race to the flag for the, for the victory. Well, just, just as it went across the start finish line. You know, you're going in one direction, then when you turn at the start finish line, you look down into the first and second corner just as far as you can see. And I've seen the car sitting on the, the end field. And when I did, then I just put it to the floor and just waited for Kale to make his move. And when he did, then he just went in the corner a little bit too hard up there and started it instead. I was able to cut back the side of him and then we kind of touched a couple of times by the end of the run. You weren't worried when he went past you. What? You weren't worried when he went past you there on the back yeah, I was worried. I was sitting there for the last 40 laps wondering what he was going to do. I didn't know what he was going to do and where he was going to do it, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. But what happened when uh, States, this is the first one that's ever showed up at the racetrack. <laughs> so everybody <laughs> Welcome to the Grand National Race. Well, Richard, congratulations to you on this terrific occasion. Mr. President, thanks for being with us. Well, pleased to be here, and it's been a very exciting day, and uh, I join in the congratulations. I even have a conflict of interest here, because uh, he's uh, doing some yeoman service in a political sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Good.